Can we say amen? Let's say amen again. Amen. God bless you all. I listen to amen. Praise God. We thank and praise God for you tuning us in one more time. Amen. I am Apostle L.C. Nass Sr., pastor and founder of True Words of the Apostolic Church, coming to you today, amen, in the mighty name of Jesus. Coming to you today with the hope that you will get a better understanding of what thus saith the Lord. Hear the Lord say in Jeremiah 6, 16, stand in the ways and see, as for the old path, where is the good way, and walk therein. Amen. But Solomon warned you that there's a way that seemed right to a man, but the end of are the ways of death. Amen. Truly, we thank God for your tuning us in once again. We want you to know, amen, that we do believe, teach, and obey just what the apostles taught. That is, there's but one Lord, one, Lord, one, faith, one faith, and one baptism. One, baptism, one, God, one God, and Father of all, who is above all, through all, in you all, then I say if you say it. Hallelujah. Amen. Truly, we thank God for you once again. As I often say, man, we sat and watched the many different TV broadcasts, the many different, amen, ministers, amen, and listen just to see what's being taught, to see what's being said, amen. And I was sitting watching the television the other day, and they had a documentary on, amen, about Amen. Things that the apostles went to. Troubles and trials that the early apostles faced. And while they was going through the many things that they faced, they was talking about the apostle Peter. And somewhere along the line, the commentator said that Peter, toward the end of his life, after being given the keys by Jesus, Peter went down to Rome and passed the keys to the Pope. We're going to look at this doctrine tonight and see, is this a doctrine of devils or is this something? What did Jesus, uh, uh, what, what did Peter do? Was it in his power to pass on the keys? Was Peter actually the first pope, as they often teach, amen? We're going to look at that and find out, amen, and go to the scriptures and find out exactly what's going on here, amen. We're going to go to Matthew 10, 1 through 4, and I'm going to read and see when Jesus called Peter, what did he call him? Jesus, after he called Peter, he named him something. What did Jesus call him? Matthew 10 and 1. And when he had called unto him his 12 disciples, uh huh, he gave them power against unclean spirits right. to cast them out. To heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. Two. Now the names of the 12 popes. Apostles. The twelve apostles are these. The first was Simon, who was called Peter. He was the first to be called, wasn't he? But Jesus named them apostles, not popes. Amen. Stop telling that lie saying, amen, that Peter was the first pope. Amen. We're going to talk to you throughout this broadcast and hopefully help you get a better understanding you're being lied to. Peter was not by himself, amen. But the first was Simon, who was called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, James, the son of Zebedee, John, his brother, Philip, and Bartholomew, Thomas, and Matthew, the publican, James, the son of Alphaeus, and Lebius, whose surname was Thaddeus, Simon, the Canaanite, and Judas Iscariot, who also betrayed him. Now, Jesus chose 12 disciples. He, he named them apostles when he chose them, amen, and he chose them to, amen, build his church upon them. All right. Now, when Jesus chose Peter, Peter had to go through some things. Jesus didn't just choose him and leave him out there, but Peter had to understand the mystery of Christ. In Matthew 16, Jesus asked a question, 16 and 13, when Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said unto him, Amen, praise God, thou art John the Baptist. Some say lies, others say Jeremiah, so one of the prophets. He said unto them, But whom say ye that I am? And 
First of all, Jesus asked, what are people saying about me? And the disciples told him what everybody else was saying. But if the disciples or the apostles going to teach everybody else, going to have responsibility of laying the foundation of the church, first they had to know themselves. Amen. So he asked, but whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, thou art the Christ. The son of the living God. And Jesus asked and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood have not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. Peter was not a pope. Peter was chosen by Jesus, amen, to build his church, amen, to be the foundation, lay the groundwork for the upbuilding of the church, amen. And in order for Peter to be one of the early founders, Peter had to know who Jesus was. People will often ask them, who art thou? But Jesus' disciples had to know. After Peter came up, Peter was given this revelation. Then we find in Matthew 16, 18 through 19, amen, we find, we'll read uh, Matthew 16, 18 and 19 and, and see what happened. And I say also unto thee, that thou art Peter, uh-huh. and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. 19, and I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom. Uh-huh. And whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loose. Do you hear what I'm saying to you? Jesus, after he had chose Peter, Peter was given a revelation, amen. Peter was given an understanding of who Jesus was. <clears throat> and after Peter was given this revelation, amen, then Jesus gave him the keys, or in other words, made him the manager of the church. Don't you know when a building is being built and the business open up, you may want to get in there and take advantage of the opening sales, the grand opening sale, but you can't do nothing till the manager come and unlock the door. Jesus made Peter the manager, and amen, it was not in Peter's power to pass the keys on to somebody else. My first wife used to work for a department store here in town. Amen. And they chose managers. They sent managers in from out of town to be over this, amen, this uh, supermarket, this, this chain, this uh, whatever they call this store here. Amen. And whenever this manager got in trouble or did something he wasn't supposed to, sometime they would have the police to escort this manager out. He couldn't pass the keys to nobody. The one that gave the keys to him, they was reaching for the keys back. The manager couldn't get mad and go out and pass the keys to somebody else because he didn't like what was going on. I'm trying to tell you something. Jesus gave Peter the keys, and if Peter, when he passed away, he couldn't give the keys to somebody else. It was not of his power. Amen. Amen. Stop telling that lie saying Peter went to Rome and gave the keys to the Pope. Now, let's look at something else that's very important, and I'm going somewhere with this. In the end, we're going to deal with the Pope, but right now I'm showing you about Peter. How did Peter pray? Now, in order to be a pope, I see this on television, you got to go up and make the sign of the cross and, you know, go through a few Hail Marys and things of that nature. And then, I'm told, I heard it said that they prayed to Mary to make sure she's going she gonna to make sure your prayers get answered. Like, she, she's Jesus' mother, she's going to make sure he do what you say. That's what I'm told why they pray to Mary. But let me show you how Peter prayed. And you make up your mind whether or not he was a pope. Matthew 6, 9 through 13. So after this manner, therefore pray ye, our Father which art in heaven, not my mother, not hell Mary. First the disciples asked Jesus to teach them to pray. And this is what Jesus told them, amen. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy mother's name. Oh, well, why are you putting Mary up there like she had the power to save? If you read the first chapter of the book of Acts, you find out on the day of Pentecost, Mary was in the upper room trying to get the Holy Ghost for herself. And I believe when Jesus went to the wedding, amen, the marriage in Cana of Galilee, he found out that they didn't have no wine. They ran out of wine. And Mary was concerned about the wine. She said, Jesus, they ain't got no wine. Y'all need to pay attention. All of y'all in the Catholic Church pay attention to what Mary, what Jesus told Mary. When Mary said that they didn't have any wine, Jesus looked and said, Woman, what have I to do with thee? 
And Mary got the message. She looked at Jesus. She looked at the people standing by watching. She said, whatever he said, do, you do it. Amen. They tried to get, amen. Mary wanted to come to her. She said, whatever Jesus said, do. Amen. amen. You have no scripture for praying in the name of Mary. Anyone else? All right. But you go finish reading that, sister. The kingdom come. Uh huh. The will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debts. Uh huh. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, uh -huh. and, and the glory, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. So we see when Jesus taught the disciples to pray, nowhere did he pass out beads. Nowhere did he tell them to learn to recite a rosary. Well, if Jesus didn't teach Peter this, where did all this mess come from that the Pope and the, and the folk of the Catholic Church do? The one that's proclaiming Peter to be the first Pope. Yeah. Some out of line, but it ain't God. Yeah. Amen. All right. Now, Peter, after the Lord taught him to pray, our Father, how did Peter actually pray? In Acts 3, 1 through 13 and verse 16. So Acts 3 and 1. Start reading, please. Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, uh -huh. being the ninth hour. And a certain man, a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried, whom they laid, da whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, uh -huh. which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple. Who seeing Peter and John about to go in the temple, uh -huh. and and Peter fastening his eyes upon Peter him, John, fastened his eyes upon him with John. Said, look on us. Uh-huh. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. And he, then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. In the name of Mary. Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father. Jesus Christ. The Son. Jesus Christ. The Holy Ghost. Jesus Nowhere do you see where Peter ever prayed using that title, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. He didn't bow down and get a pair of beads and go to rubble saying, Hail Mary, amen, full of grace. So if Peter didn't do this, why are you trying to make him be a pope? And I ain't through with you yet. I'm just getting started. Read on, sister. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, uh -huh. rise up and walk. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Not Mary. Now, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, read. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up. And immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. Yes. And he, leaping up, stood and walked and entered with them into the temple. Uh huh. Walking and leaping and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God, and they knew that it was he which sat for arms at the beautiful gate of the temple. Yes. And they were filled with wonder and amazement. At that which had happened unto him. Yes. And as the lame man which was healed held Peter and John, all the people ran together. All the people came to see what was going on. Read. Unto them in the porch, that is called Solomon's, greatly wondering. And when Peter saw it, he answered unto the people, Ye men of Israel, what are we at this? Or why look ye so earnestly on us? Why are you looking at us? Read. As though by our own power. Or holiness, we have made this man to walk. Uh huh. The, the God of Abraham and Isaac and of Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his son Jesus. Not Mary, but his son Jesus. Right. He's glorifying Jesus, not Mary. Read. Whom he delivered up and denied him the presence of Father when he was determined to let him go. Verse 16. And his name, through faith in his name, has made this man strong, whom ye see and know. Yea, the faith which is by him has given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. Having faith in the name of the Lord, not Mary. We're trying to make a point here. Nowhere can you find what Peter ever prayed the way they do in the Catholic Church. Amen. And if Peter was the first pope, amen, well, I'm, let, let me go and make this point known to you. The word pope means Father, it means father, and it's a title that should not be given to a preachers. And we're going to cover that a little later on. But here's the main thing I want to bring out. One of the laws of the Catholic Church is that the Pope is infallible. 
the Pope has the final authority, the final word in the Catholic Church, and it says that he's infallible, which means he can't lie. He can't be wrong. Right. Only God is infallible, not man. We see just recently where one of the popes that they elected had to retire. He was sick. I guess he had to go out on disability. You ain't going to find where God got to go out on disability. He's not going to get sick. Not that kind of sick. He probably sick of the lies you tell him. Peter was not a pope. There's no such title in the Bible. And we're going we to prove that to you a little further, a little later on. All right? Now, let me go down here and look at something else. Amen. According to Matthew 28, 19, it appears that Jesus said to baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. If Jesus had commissioned Peter to be a pope, gave Peter the keys, don't you think Peter would have been fired when Peter got there in the doors of the church and he didn't do what Jesus said? Read Acts 2, 37 through 39 and tell me how, how did Peter baptize? Now when they heard this, now when they heard this, they were pricking their hearts, uh -huh. and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, uh -huh. men and brethren, men and brethren, what shall we do? Now they wanted to know what to do to be saved. This is how. This is right there where you're trying to find out what to do. Read. What did Peter tell them? Then Peter said unto them, Repent, uh huh, and be baptized. Believe in your heart. Be baptized. Confess with your mouth. Be baptized. Repent and be baptized. Every one of you. In the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sin. Uh huh. And he shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. 39. For the promises unto you and to your children and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Now, throw 42 in there. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring that together now, too. Throw 42 in there. And they continue steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread. All right, now let me go back and break this down to you. Say, repent and be baptized, not sprinkled. Water baptism represents a spiritual burial. And nowhere I see that when they go to a funeral, when you do a funeral, they don't just sprinkle dirt on them and leave the body on top of the ground. But at a burial, they bury that man, that man or woman, that boy or girl or whoever the person is being funeralized. They put them six feet under the ground. When you baptize somebody, the same thing. You carry them under the water and bring them back up out of it. Where did all this ungodly mess come from if it didn't originate in the Bible? The word baptize itself means to be immersed. In the Bible, when they baptized, they went down into the water and came up out of it. Now, how are you going to get sprinkling? If Peter was a man of Pope, as it's been taught by the Catholic Church, well, he'd be one of the biggest liars and hypocrites there were. Do you hear what I'm saying? Amen. But Peter said, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ. Not Father, amen. not Son, not Holy Ghost. Amen. If Jesus, amen, Peter and none of the rest of the apostles ever baptized the way it's written in Matthew 28, 19. Did Peter disobey Jesus? No. no. Solomon said, of all you're getting, get an understanding. Amen. Now I'm about to say something that's going to upset some people. Some people are going to be angry. Some already know it, but I'm going to tell you anyway. The Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, or Trinity Doctrine, did not exist in Jesus' day. Amen. Jesus never uttered that line phrase that's written in Matthew 28, 19. That's why you never see a witness to it. Jesus said, out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, and let every word be established. You don't see Peter or nobody ever baptized or praying using that title, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. But... I can give you three witnesses baptized in the name of Jesus. We just read to you what Peter did it in Acts 2.38. In Acts 8.16, Philip the Evangelist, he baptized in the name of the Lord. Acts 19 and 5, the Apostle Paul baptized in the name of the Lord. Those are three witnesses that baptized in the church age, amen, in the name of Jesus Christ. You can't find one that did it any other way in the Bible. Amen. And if you go to the public library, some of you can get on your phones there and look it up online. Look up the Nicene Creed. N-I-C-E-N-E, -E, the Nicene Creed. The Nicene Creed is where Constantine the Great, after beginning to run the Roman Empire like a church, he had to explain who was the Holy Ghost, I mean, who was the Son and who was God. 
They talk about Jesus. Was he God or was he man? And trying to explain the deity of Christ, they didn't have a revelation like Peter did. So they got together in the Nicene Creed held in 325 A.D., 300 and some years after Christ. 300 and some years, now three whole centuries, and came up making the Son consubstantial and co-equal with the Father. In other words, they said Jesus was spirit just like the Father, and they both was eternal. That's just the first part of that line doctrine. Then they went back to having church again, and somebody wanted to know about the Holy Spirit or the Holy Ghost. Well, what about him? Ain't he important? So they had another meeting called the First Council of Constantinople, held in 381 A.D., and they made the Holy Ghost consubstantial and co-eternal with the Father and Son. This made the third leg of the line Trinity doctrine as the doctrine for the a foundation of doctrine for the Catholic Church. It did not exist in Jesus' day. Check it out in the library. You find out I'm not lying to you. Amen. The earliest mention even of Father, Son, and Holy Ghost was as a baptismal formula, and it was not mentioned until 100 years after the death of Christ. Amen. Do you hear what I'm saying? 100 years. So if this mess did not exist in Jesus' day, how could he have spoken in Matthew 20 and 19? That's why nobody ever actually did it because he never said it. This phrase was put there hundreds of years later when the English translators translated the New Testament from Greek to English. They slipped that in there to try and lend credence to the great whore, the Catholic Church. Amen. Amen. All right, and I had to go ahead and read that, amen. Hey, oh, you want me to run that by you again? You don't have to rewind the, the DVD or the tape. The Nicene Creed held in 325 A.D., they made the Father and the Son co-substantial, co-equal. In 381 A.D., in the First Council of Constantinople, amen, they had another council that made the Holy Ghost. They put him in there with the Father and Son. This completed the third part of the Trinity Doctrine as a foundational doctrine for the Catholic Church. It was Amen. done by Constantine the Great and a few of the Catholic bishops, not Jesus and the apostles. Amen. The actual witness to what Jesus said in Matthew 20 and 19 is Luke 24, 47. Amen. But Jesus said that repentance and remission of sin will be preached in his name beginning at Jerusalem. That's why Peter began to preach and when he preached remission of sin which is by water baptism in Acts 2.38 he said it should be done in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Out of all you get and get an understanding. Alright, now why did I have her to read verse 42? In Acts 2.42 the writer lets you know what doctrine Peter followed. They continued steadfastly in the apostles, not, not Augustine's, Amen. not John Calvin's, Amen. not Martin Luther's. Amen. Amen. Do you hear what I'm saying? Constantine and he was the founder of the Catholic Church, but these other boys, all of them branched out from him and sprung out and laid on the start of their own church. But all of them had that Father, Son, and Holy Ghost doctrine because they didn't have a revelation. They didn't understand the oneness of God. Amen. Amen. Augustine, Constantine, and all these folks, they followed the Catholic doctrine. Amen. Peter and the apostles followed the apostles' doctrine. Amen. amen. Ephesians 2, 19 and 20, the Bible reads, amen, praise God, you are no more foreign than strange, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God, praise God, and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets. Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Jesus built the church upon a, upon a foundation, and it wasn't John Calvin, wasn't Martin Luther, wasn't Augustine, but it was on what the apostles taught. Do you hear what I'm saying? I could run it down and show you how the apostles got, but let me go and do that anyway. Because somebody said Peter had a big mouth, hey amen, they don't, don't like Paul. But I believe, praise God, if you read in 2 Corinthians 4, 3 and 4, it's Paul saying, if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. Fourth verse, in whom the God of this world, small G-O-D, Satan, hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, see that? He started off saying our gospel, now it's the gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine under them. The devil got his fingers in your eye and got you blinded. The apostles' doctrine was Christ's doctrine. You want more proof? All right. Get... Second John 9 and 10. 
Second John 9 and 10. I want you to hear what, here's another witness, what John said about it. Read. Whosoever transgresseth. Whosoever sinneth. And abideth not. And abideth not. In the doctrine of Christ. Didn't I tell you Christ had a doctrine? Read. Faith has not God. You don't have God. You ain't saved. Read. He that abideth in the doctrine. But if you're in that doctrine and stay in the doctrine of Christ. He has both the Father and the Son. Read on. Next verse. If there come any unto you. And bring not this doctrine, receive them not into your house. Uh huh. Neither be in him God's feet. Now, see, this John the Apostle talking. He was one of the brethren right there with Peter. They come and don't bring the Apostle doctrine, don't receive him in your house. Amen. I don't care what kind of witness he say here, don't let him in there. They can give you all the hell maybe they want. They come there, they're going to be in there being here with their lie in their mouth. Out of all you get and get an understanding. Have you ever wondered why Jesus said, Not ever wanted to say unto me, Lord, Lord, go in into the kingdom of God? Amen. A lot of folk calling on the Lord and go find out to get that they didn't know him. Looking for a Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, going to be one throne and one on the throne. Amen. The man, Christ Jesus. Yeah. All right, now, let me go a little further here. What does the, I told you the word Pope means father. Why, why is that wrong? You see it all the time. Bless me, Father, for I have sinned. Bless me, Father. And they go to doing all of the, 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 all of the crosses and stuff, and they're talking to that man, and he done just got through problem molesting some boys. All right, let me read on. Matthew 23 and 1. Then spake Jesus to the multitude and to his disciples, saying, The scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. Verse 5, but all their works they do for to be seen of men. They make broad their phylacteries and enlarge the borders of their garments and love the uppermost rooms at feasts and the chief seats in the synagogue and greetings in the markets and to be called of men, Rabbi, Rabbi. You don't even, now listen at this because I hear they got some rabbis in there too. Be not ye called Rabbi. This is Jesus talking now. Be not ye called Rabbi. For one is your master, even Christ. Yeah. And all ye are brethren. Now, verse 9, have you got this? Read, read verse 9 for me. And call no man your father upon the earth. Call your preacher father upon earth. No well, if Jesus saying don't call no man your father a rabbi, why are all these titles in the church, in the Catholic church? Yeah. In Ephesians, the fourth chapter, when Jesus got ready to ascend back on high, he gave gifts unto men. Yes, Lord. And now, uh, let me see. He gave some apostles, yes. some prophets, yes. some pastors, some evangelists, some teachers, and I'm still waiting to find out where the nuns and the cardinals and all these folk come from. I don't see all of them. If Jesus didn't put them in his church, where did they come from? Do you hear what I'm saying? Some out of line, but it ain't God. He built this foundation up on what the apostles taught. Not John Calvin. Not Martin Luther. Not even Tertullian. You better lose here. All right. Read on, sister. For one is your father, which is in heaven. Now, you can now, you got a daddy, your, your natural biological father. You can call him father. But when you talk about father as in heavenly father, somebody able to forgive your sin, you done blaspheme. You done sin. You did something that God told you not to do. Amen. I ask this question often, and I'm going to ask you again. How can you disobey God and obey him at the same time? Right, if you said thou shalt not and you're doing it, how can that be? How do you think God can get glory out of that? I just want you to understand something. Peter was not a pope. Peter did none of these things. They didn't call Peter Peter uh, Peter father. They didn't call him master. Now they called Jesus rabbi. Look out now. Read on, sister. Verse ten. Neither be called masters, but one is your master, even Christ. Did you hear that? Now these are things you should not be calling people. Not in the church in a church age, Amen. We're going to let you go. I realize some of you, now, it's, it's going to upset you, but, you know, sometimes the preaching of the gospel has got to hurt you in order to help you. Right. You've been unfair and broke your leg, and you're hurting in a lot of pain. You go to the doctor and pay him. If you ain't got insurance, he ain't going to see you. But you go and pay him, and guess what he's going to do? Twist that leg and, and relocate it for you and set it for you, put a cast on it. You're hurting bad enough, amen, but he's going to put you through a little more pain trying to help you. Right. 
I'm just trying to help you today. Amen. All right. Now, Revelation 17, 1 through 18. We, we may not read all this to you, but I talked to you about a great whore. It's not hard to find out. Now, this is Jesus talking to John, amen, I believe. Rebel, he's talking to the church in Revelation. And there came one of the seven angels, which had the seven vows, and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. Now, you know what that means? Drunk with the wine of her fornication. Fornication means, now this, first of all, this whore want to pass itself off as the bride of Christ. But the world got a saying, you can't make a housewife out of a whore. And God said, and he told the Jews, he didn't even want a whore among the daughters of Israel. But this whore want to pass itself off as the bride of Christ. But it said the kings are drunk. They committed fornication with the inhabitants of the earth. Have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication, the wine of her unfaithfulness. The Catholic Church teaching folk to pray to Mary. That's a contradiction. Amen. They teaching folks, praise God, to worship Baal. I, oh, I forgot to tell you, didn't I? Constantine the Great was a sun god worshiper. He didn't get the Holy Ghost. He didn't go to the upper room. Constantine the Great went to sleep and had a dream. I guess that would be likened to what somebody said, get religion. And the dream came true. And he said Jesus gave him the dream. So now all of a sudden he become a Christian. Before then he was persecuting Christians. You know, killing them, having them put to death. The apostolic folk. The upper room folk. With the upper room experience, Constantine the Great was having them put to death, but he had this dream, of, I'm a Christian. And now everybody in the kingdom went to saying they're a Christian. Do you hear what I'm saying? So now, since the Catholic Church is in authority, Constantine was the founder of it, in order to keep people coming, to keep these heathens happy when they come in, they let them keep all of the practices of bear worship. What am I talking about? Let me make a little plain to you. Jeremiah 10, 1 through 5, God said, Learn not the ways of the heathen, for the customs of the people are vain. For the heathens, I mean, the, the, the people are dismayed at them. But then he wanted to say, For one cut of the forest out of the tree, decking it with silver and gold, fastening with hammer and nails that it moved not. Do you get the picture? They didn't call it Christmas back then because Christ wasn't born. They was cutting down these trees upright like a palm tree, had folk hired to cut them down. They decked them with silver gold. They was doing this years, hundreds of years. I believe in the book of Jeremiah, it was about six or seven hundred years before Christ was born. So they didn't call it Christmas, but this was part of bear worship. They were doing this as, as to Nimrod and the Queen of Heaven. Do you hear what I'm saying? And we just got to go into what they call Easter. This is also part of their worship. Amen. 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 One day we got, I think we, we just did a, a list, a post of a YouTube broadcast. You can find out about that. Amen. About, we talked to you about all the practices of Easter. Amen. But this came through the church, amen, that Constantine set up because this was stuff he did. He worshiped Baal. And so now in order to keep the people happy, instead of worshiping Baal, the sun god, it, the sun like in the sky, when they start operating like a church, they call it the son of God. Right. Switch it around a little bit. Give the people some gifts. Make them happy. You know, everybody wants something for nothing. This has nothing to do with Christ and the apostles. Amen. The Catholic Church is the one perpetuating this stuff. Easter. In fact, I told you about the Nicene Creed a while ago. Do you not realize that? Well, I'll tell you what, look it up and you'll find out for yourself. The Nicene Creed also was the council where they agreed to celebrate Easter on the first sun after the spring equinox every year. They agreed to celebrate the resurrection on Sunday over here in the United States. The Catholic Church was the one behind that. Over what Jesus was crucified, the resurrection celebrated on different days of the week, every week. However, it celebrated on Sunday. Because Jesus didn't die on a Friday, nor did he rise on a Sunday. Check out some of our other YouTube videos and you'll find out what I'm talking about. But these are some of the things that the Catholic Church are doing to keep the people drunk, to keep the people away from the truth. 
Amen. Jesus didn't set this for us. Valentine's Day, Halloween, and all this mess. It goes back, amen, to practices of the Catholic Church. Amen. That's what it means by, amen, they've been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. Now start reading at the third verse. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-colored beast, uh-huh. full of names of blasphemy, full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. Uh-huh. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color, and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls. Most holes are read. Having a golden cup in her hand, full of abomination and filthiness of her fornication. Now read the next verse. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots. Did you, wait? Did you hear that? Amen. Mystery Babylon the Great. The mother of harlots. I told you a while ago when Augustine, I mean, praise God, when, uh, who was that? Uh, Constantine started the Catholic Church, running the Roman Empire like the Catholic Church. After a while, they had some discrepancies, and Augustine pulled off and started him a church. Then Calvin, folk went to put it off. Each one disagreed with certain things that were taught by the mama hole, so they went out and became little harlots like their mother. It was called the Great Reformation Period. When they was reforming because of differences, each one was a little whore after their mama. These were not churches that Christ set up. It's a matter of record. It's a matter of history. The Bible it gives distinct description of the church that Jesus established. You can find it in the book of Acts. And nowhere do you find the practices set forth in the modern day Catholic church. It didn't even exist in Jesus' day. Amen. But read on, sister. And abominations of the earth. Uh-huh. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints. Didn't I tell you that the Roman Empire killed a lot of God's people? Yeah. Nero was responsible for Paul and a lot of other saints there. Yeah. Amen. They catch the saints. Amen. The ones speaking in tongues, shouting and dancing in the Holy Ghost. Some of them they saw them have. Some of them they skinned them alive. Some of them they put them between wild beasts and they tore them asunder. But Nero liked to get them and tie them to a tree or some and put wax on them and use them to light the streets or light his garden with them. He was real cruel to the people of God. These were the Roman emperors. So the Roman, I mean, the Roman Catholic Church sprang out of the Roman Empire. That's why I said this whole was drunk with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus, the blood of the saints, and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. Read on. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. Uh huh. And the angel said unto me, Wherefore didst thou marvel? I will tell thee the mystery of the woman. And of the beast that carries her, uh -huh. which has seven heads and seven heads and ten horns. Read. The beast that thou sawest was and is not, and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit, uh -huh. and go into perdition. And they that dwell on the earth shall wonder, whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world, when they behold the beast that was and is not, and yet is. Uh huh. And here's the mind which has wisdom. Listen at this now. You you wonder why I said it that the Roman Empire is the great whore, the Catholic Church. Read, listen at this now. Tell them about the seven heads. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sitteth. Read. And there are seven kings, five are fallen, and one is, and the other is not, yet come. When he cometh, he must continue a short space. Just a little while. Read. And the beast that was and is not, even he is the eighth, and his other seven, and goeth into perdition. And the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings, which have received no kingdom as yet. Uh huh. But received power as kings one hour. With the beast. God going to allow for the beast to rise, allow him a certain period of time to rule. Read. These have one mind, and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. These shall make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb shall overcome them. See, this beast is talking about the Antichrist. That's when that beast is going to come. He's going to make war with the Lamb, and, and, and the Lamb going to destroy him. You don't mess with God. Read on. For he is Lord of lords and King of kings, and they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful. And he said unto me, The waters which thou sawest, where the horse sitteth, are peoples and multitudes and nations. That hold on spread out over multitudes everywhere you go. You got somebody, somebody.
America. They mean I can speak English. They say, but they're doing this and got them beads rubbing them. Oh, I hope you hear what I'm saying to you. This is not of God. Amen. Amen. You're going to bless me, Father, for I have sinned all. Look here. I'm telling you what the word say. Read on. And tongue. And the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast, these shall hate the whore, and shall make her desolate and naked. Uh oh. She shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire. For God has put in their hearts to fulfill his will and to agree and give their kingdom unto the beast. Unto the words of God shall be fulfilled. Listen to this 18th verse now. And the woman which thou sawest is that great city. That great city. Rome was a world power in Jesus' day. You know, every time, you know, Jesus done something wrong or somebody dragging you up to the, to Nero or to the emperor or to Caesar. Oh and even Paul, when Paul got in trouble, he fell back on his Roman citizenship to get out of trouble sometime. Amen. 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 Because, you know, when you was a Rome, Rome was a world empire. That was a great city. A world power at that time. Read. Which reigned over the kings of the earth. Now, I told you, that's, that, that woman set up on seven mountains. You do research. You check. It ain't hard to find out Rome is a great city. Rome is still here today. It's the only place in the world that sits a city that's built atop seven hills. And that's why Jesus described that whole like that, because names change over the years. Amen. Don't you know if he'd have said Rome, he'd have named Rome as the holy to change their name to something else? Most a lot of prostitutes anyway. They got a false name. They got a name Candy, uh, Tessie. They don't, that's not their real name. They put a blonde wig on. They give you a false name because they don't want when they get off work. They don't want you to know who they is. You hear what I'm saying? Amen. But this woman, this city was sitting up on seven hills, and you can't hide them seven hills. Them seven hills are like a landmark. It's like the Grand Canyon. It's like Niagara Falls. It's something that don't change going to be there. So whatever name you call it by, you look around and you find one place with seven hills, you know that that hole is. That's the way you can identify. Amen. But I want you to know something. This was a Roman Catholic church. Amen. Peter was not a pope. Peter did not give his keys after he died. He did not go to Rome and give them to the Pope. The keys remain just where he left them in the apostolic church. Yeah. Amen. How could you say you the church of Christ, you the church of Christ established, and you contradicted and blasphemed just about everything he done? Right, yeah. Amen. I wouldn't want a child. Like if my wife wouldn't have, wouldn't have no baby no better than that, I don't think I could be married to her. Right. Amen. I tell her go and she come. I tell her come and she go. I tell her cook, and then she throws something at me. Oh, yeah. Something wrong somewhere. But I'm your wife. Uh-huh. Not for long. <laughs> you think Jesus want a bride that won't obey him like that? The church is the bride of Christ. Amen. You trying to pass himself off as a bride, but you got a sad thing coming. I come to tell you, Peter was not a pope. The apostles, amen, were chosen by Jesus. No wonder you find these blasphemous title names in the church. Everything you need to know about the church, you can find it in the Word of God. If you want to know something about the great whore, go to the encyclopedia. Do you hear what I'm saying? Praise God. Look at them. They Sometimes politicians got to go to them now to find out something. All these priests, it's on the news. I'm not telling you nothing you don't know. All these priests, but there's molesting boys, a lot of them being covered up for by the Catholic Church. They switch them somewhere else. Amen. God don't have such filth in his church. Amen. I thank God for these few words, but I want you to know, I realize sometimes the preaching of the gospel is offensive, amen. But as Apostle Paul said in Galatians 4, 16, have I become your enemy because I tell you the truth. Amen. Come out of it. If you're out there in that mess, come out of it. Come on on to the church that was established by Christ and the apostles. If you want to get an understanding of the word, come to those who had a revelation of the word, praise God. And I come to tell you, man, Jesus is Lord. God bless you. Pray my strength in God.